Good evening. This is the news. In sports, undrafted quarterback Tommy DeVito's agent, Sean Stellato, won Monday Night Football after wearing what appears to be a spirit of Halloween gangster instacate. <laughs> what you, when you meet a guy like this, only one thing is for sure, and that is he's going to tell you a very loud volume story about a broad he bananaed before handing you a business card printed on ravioli. <laughs> Squid Game, the challenge, crowned its new winner during the final episode based on the hit South Korean show of the same name that pits large groups of people against each other and they form alliances and stab each other in the back and do whatever it takes to become rich, or as we like to call it, conservative media. <laughs> <laughs> A college professor went viral after going dumpster diving around campus during student move-out week, finding valuable items. Weird. I always thought dumpster diving was a euphemism for anal. That's why I always want to go dumpster diving on my oh, birthday. Garbage man. After an 18% decrease, Detroit is now on pace for its lowest homicide rate in nearly 60 years. As someone who grew up in Detroit, I'm happy to announce that we are now only the fourth most dangerous city in America. Progress. Good job. Yeah. I think it's due to the lower population. <laughs> oh. So many have been murdered that it's just... It's, is it not per capita? I don't know what it is. I don't know what that means. Oh, there's only like 600,000 left. Mm. Anyway, welcome to Normal World. I'm Dave Landau. I'm Quarterback Garrett. And today, we all, as always, Angela. Well, not always. Oh, that's true. I I try to block those times out. I really miss Mangela. I really enjoyed her. Well, we appreciate you getting your reverse bottom surgery and joining us again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling good. And coming back to your old self. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And please welcome today, uh, from Detroit, hip-hop artist, Dirty White. Hola, hola. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? A C A C. I don't even know what I said. Yeah, I'm the I, worst Mexican ever. You know that. I think you said hello, hello. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that works. So. Yeah. I, I live in Texas, so what technically I'm more Mexican than you now. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> it happens when you, you get residency. They give you the handbook of how to speak Spanish, <laughs> English. They do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, well, if you want to... I've you, learned. I never felt more like the worst Mexican ever than since I've been in Texas. Yes. When you get in an Uber and you don't know how to talk to them? Mm -hmm. Or they just hang up on me because I don't understand what they're saying. <laughs> like, I Wobble. don't... You're just an angry Mexican yelling <laughs> at an angry Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> Orderly! Yeah. <laughs> you're like, come on, speak the language. Who am I? What have I become? <laughs> Is this America? Speak American. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what am I? I knew this was going. Well, this, you're right. It's, it's already gone down. It took me eight seconds to make a Mexican joke. He was Very just fast. saying this to the makeup lady. I would just like to say that it was you that brought that up. I, but he, I didn't bring it up. <laughs> he brought it up. I just played off of it. Uh -huh. I've known. No, it's usually Dave that walks me down the hallway. Yeah, he, he walked me down the hallway. I did. That That's was, true. And it was because the Uber driver completely stranded him last night. This really happened. That's I got ditched at the, at the airport. Yeah. What happened? Oh. She didn't understand what I was. I was literally, I'm like, I'm at, it literally says, ma'am, entrance E14 or whatever it was. And she said, there's no such thing. I'm at 17. And I'm like, yeah, I'm looking at 17. I can visually see it. And it's far from me. Just keep driving. Subtract three. <laughs> and I wasn't being a dick. I was just like, just subtract three, ma'am. Just keep, yeah. you can't go the other way. Just keep going. <laughs> Have to go forward. And then she said, you're downstairs. And I was looking up at the sky saying, ma'am, there's, there's literally nothing. It's a sky above. I mean, I asked the five people behind me because she said, this place is packed and everyone's wearing black because I told her I was wearing black. And then she's, I'm like, I'm little, ma'am, I'm standing in the road now. And she just went and she hung up on me and canceled wow. and told you and, and, and told Allie that I didn't show up. <laughs> there's, no, <laughs> there's nothing that comforts a woman more than, look, I'm wearing all black. <laughs> right. It's nighttime. Yeah. Just, yeah. just come down to a section where I told you I'm not going to be <laughs> and I'm in all black. <laughs> Don't mind the tools that I have. It's all right. I have, Tape. A, ba I have a bag of stuff. Yes. I have, uh, Zip ties. Well, let's talk about this. I want to get into it. Mm -hmm. You you went to college, right? I, yeah, trade school. You did. Yes. That's the way to go. Mm -hmm. It That's is the way to go. What was college the trade? Was scam. <laughs> Broadcast art. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hate you. What? <laughs> Dude, that was the first thing you brought up. <laughs> I 
I, I love you so just much, and you just just like I don't know why I did that, but I just for safety off the every show. time I I'm on air with you. Just you talked just, about that. You asked me not to. <laughs> I was like, "What's your degree in?" <laughs> I've known him for ten years. He's he's a good yeah. friend of mine. He's I'm on a record with DMC that hangs in my office from Run DMC because of this yeah, man. He gave it to me before the show. It's Christmas season. Coming here with gifts. Where can we get it too? I'm going to early it. plug you. That one, believe oh. it or not, for being full of samples from the Rolling Stones and and the Who, that one is finally streaming everywhere. Thank goodness. It took me about two years oh, to yeah. get it up, but it's called Authenticated. That one's streaming everywhere. Can DMC came in, and it, 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 Dave, you know, you've heard it. It literally sounds like. He's on his old Run DMC stuff. It's really cool. I would have never met him if it wasn't for you, and I got to interview him twice because of you and to see him perform with you. So, yeah. It's yeah, that's freaking awesome, killer. Man. We even did uh, the COVID thing, the Skype with the... Yeah, that's right. Talk about the the effects of COVID on entertainers being stuck at home. Yep. Mm. That's right. That was that a was, heavy episode. Yeah, there was like six of us on there. That was the day that changed my life a little bit. I started thinking more about when he said... Uh, if you think that your people are really looking in on you, you got to give them something to watch. And then he said on that same episode, don't worry about your music not streaming or your numbers because people need to work to hear your music. It's authenticated. They shouldn't just find it. This should be like a Who record that hasn't yeah. been released. And he is really good. You know, you've talked to him a couple of times. He's really good at gassing you up and making you feel better about your... Oh, yeah. Well, really I mean, cool. his... Well, I mean, his whole book I read and just the idea that he was drinking a case of 40s a day and he was going to go kill himself and mm -hmm. decided not to jump off the bridge that whole story that was the man when the, when I the day I met him all this happened for anybody watching all this happened because I was blessed to be able to interview him and I I was I was a, I was given a 15 minute interview that turned into an hour and 15 minutes because he was talking to somebody that knew hip hop and and his manager just kept saying keep going he likes talking nice. to you and uh, we kept rolling and kept rolling and then uh, I forgot my whole point but well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love one of <laughs> But that's, I think that's the point. That's interesting. That's when you know you have a real one because there's so many people that will go in and have shorter interviews because they really don't have anything to say. Right. You show up and it's supposed to be 15 minutes and he just has more stuff to say because he's so knowledgeable. That's really great when you have a guest like that's like that. Yeah, and then thank you. Somehow that just triggered it. What he said to me, and now keep in mind, you know, Run DMC was the first concert I ever went to. Run DMC and the Beastie Boys opening up. Oh. It was the greatest day of my life. It made me want to be a rapper. It made me love rap more than I already did. And uh, I just thought it was the coolest. And now I'm interviewing this guy. And I was watched, it Tiger Stadium. It was at Pine Knob. Okay. And uh, up to I I I checked out to prepare myself because I'd never interviewed a celebrity before, just my friends, you know, or you know, like I, I met you through Heather. So yeah. there was always a buffer. And uh, this time I was I was terrified, you know, uh, interviewing this guy already. And then I was open up, and I was like, oh man, this is fun. And I love Run DMC. I mean, when when JMJ died, uh, people will call to make sure I was cool. That's how much I love Run DMC. And he said these exact words and from what i know he hadn't said it on any show yet he just looked down out of nowhere and he said uh he said i found out i was adopted jay was murdered uh i found out my biological father died this is all within like the same year and he said and then i lost my voice and he goes i was a metaphysical suicidal emotional wreck and i wanted to die and my heart just dropped into my stomach i'm like not you d you've given me a lifetime of positivity man you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so from that day forward, we both realized we had that sobriety and depression thing going. And that's why it was really important, man. I, I wanted to get you on that show, that podcast with him. I really wanted to introduce you guys. No, it was, and I can't thank you enough because honestly, interviewing him, his message to people is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Finding, I mean, from finding God to finding his voice to finding reason to live beyond, because he's also a guy who had what was essentially everything, mm -hmm. and it didn't give him satisfaction. And that's something that I've always found so interesting about people like that, when you hit the height of everything, and it's, and you look at him, he has alcohol bloat. He even said he didn't want to be at Live Aid. Oh, yeah. He, his depression was already so bad, he didn't want to be there. He wanted yeah. to be off drinking somewhere. Yeah. A case of 40s. Mm -hmm. 
That's fucked. Thank God he's still here and that dude is sober as a stuff. He's a rock, man. That day that I met him, he, I'm like, he's not showing up for my interview. I go storm into the hotel front desk to call up to his room and he comes out of the elevator. He's like six something. I'm like, hi. Uh, well, <laughs> What's up, person? For coming I, on the show. <laughs> What's up, person I idolize? He goes, yeah. you the guy with the neck tattoos? I'm like, <laughs> we're going to be friends. <laughs> yeah. He looks 30, and when he was 20, he looked 50. That was yeah. That's the secret. <laughs> like Steve Martin. Yeah, it is. Look, you look old young, and you look young forever. Yeah, it is it is amazing. It's weird. And he, he will. I'm, I'm pretty sure I told you, but in, in case I didn't, your skit was the highlight of his album because he said that's been his entire life. Oh, that's well, awesome. People calling him to his face like, are you DMC from Run DMC? Like, no, nah, I'm DMC from Kenny G. That's why I had to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to put it in there, like, and then I felt like an asshole because that's what I said to you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, I'm DMC from ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just the dumbest gonna question. Mess, gonna mess with people. Yeah, no, no, it's the, it's the last part of it. You went, you went so deep. You were like the DMC from UMC. Yeah, yeah. How bizarre. <laughs> How bizarre. <laughs> Do you think Run gets that? Hey, Run. Are you are you like from Run DMC? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ah, what That's you great. Do? So, let's talk about this real quick. We know college kids are awesome. Yeah, sure. And they <laughs> they they take a joke. They're mm -hmm. just good. And at the University of Kansas, students recently held a meeting uh, for a safe space on campus. And uh, as expected, all of the different woke ideologies clashed. Which I mean, who who would have thought? Uh, let's take a look. Um, snowflake mentality is one that deserves to trigger warning. Safe spaces things of that nature that we don't necessarily believe in. We believe in freedom of thought, and we believe that you should be able to voice your opinion without being shut down by the other side like we've seen at Kansas. My family has not amassed enough wealth since they came out of chattel slavery to literally pay for my education, so I go into debt, and I graduate with a huge amount of debt when my white counterparts do not. Um, Wait, I don't know. White people go into debt too. It's exactly. not just I'm indebted. I'm indebted. I don't have debt. Like that's what I gotta deal with going to class as a black female at the University of Kansas. I gotta deal with walking by a white man. Cut up safe space stickers. Why are you guys arguing? Kappa Alpha needs more beer. Like, you can party there. They serve fat girls. My pronouns are they. They. So from, from now on, when you refer to them, you use they, them, there, because we've shown you the respect to refer to you by your name. So from now on, you will refer to them as they, because that is the appropriate thing to do when you are above the age of fucking 12. All right, yo, bros and thems, uh, let's talk about this real quick. Like, let's talk about age of consent. My girlfriend's still in high school, so I just want to make sure everybody's cool with that. Like, because in Michigan, it's 16, and here at KC, it's 18, so let's work on that. And my question is, you say freedom of speech, and... That's what actually is the rest of the letter? Not opinion. What is okay, the rest of the letter? Wipe the jelly defensiveness when you are attacked about your privilege. And I'll even say attack because of the tone I'm talking to you in. Like I said. Also, let's talk about consent laws. Like, how drunk do you have to be to be, like, cool with it? Like, you know, like, I get it, but if you're, like, awake. Right? Sheila? Let out your white niggas are trying to save it. But this group thinks safe spaces shouldn't exist. It's not your right to say that safe spaces should not exist. It's it's at, it hey, please do not interrupt your own. It's absolutely is my right. Okay. My intellectual safe space is the idea that you can't retreat from the I'm not retreating. I'm making myself safe and comfortable. That's fine. You're living. What are you doing as a white person who has the privilege to walk into a classroom and be automatically Stop respected playing this. because you were born? <laughs> Stop it. The joke's over. I can't listen <laughs> to Larry. <laughs> <anymore. laughs> my God. Oh my goodness. Oh, I like that one guy though. He had a lot of good ideas. I mean, he had some points. Yeah, he had some points. It's in true. Like well, listening to him. What is the, what is consent? So what? <laughs> <laughs> is the Romeo and Juliet clause? Yeah, yeah. There's several. Yeah, there's a buffer zone there. Yeah, there should be something. You know, if you're in love, I mean, and also Sigma Alpha Fredo needs beer. Yeah, <laughs> Alpha Fredo. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> That's a real thing that happened though. It's what when you notice at the end there is a guy who is just wearing flip flops <laughs> and like a backwards hat and clearly doesn't belong there. And he looks like he's from a frat, and he is the most yelled at person. <laughs> so, <laughs> Towards whoa. the end of the clip. And they're like, I have to walk past white people at a college. And it's like, yeah, it's going to happen. 
<laughs> he's just trying to chill. He just wanted to have fun. <laughs> they were going to play a game like why would you, or something. Yeah, but why would you attend this? No, yeah, no way. No way I'm going to that. Unless uh, those guys, they were trying. They were like, look, we have this, the right to free speech. And, and they were like, no! <laughs> like what is that that lady that she was like i i go to college and i get out of debt and the my white counterparts do not i'm like the what? sexy one in the white yes yeah <laughs> smoke show what what world do you live in hun <laughs> like smoke show. <laughs> the smoked brisket oh, yeah show. <laughs> sorry i mean hot yeah i don't know anybody of any race that goes to college and doesn't end up in debt right trade school <laughs> i paid cash but <laughs> yes. well, you know, in trade school, you can make a lot of money. Yeah, get out of trade school. But like, you go to college, college, you're going to be in debt. That's how the system is set up. That's you're going to be in works. debt for the rest of your life. I went to community Everybody. college. I paid with fives and tens That's because right. of the job I had at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hit up community college for the basics, and then you go on to trade school to learn a real skill and make money. Yeah, you can go with a mother of five in a Looney Tune shirt. I don't know if it's true, but I heard that more uh, more kids these days are trying to go to trade schools. It's good. Because they're figuring it out. Like, I don't want to end up in millions of dollars of debt. And well, and also, like, not even the get kind a job. of jobs that you can get now don't require college when you can just open presents on YouTube. Right. That's true. Mm. And well, also, if you How can, old is that kid that everybody. makes, he's like a millionaire for opening things on YouTube? Right. I think he's 48 now. <laughs> yeah. But... I think he. I think his parents gave him hormones so he doesn't grow. Stunt his. Because he's been around for a while. Yeah, it's kind of weird. No, I hate that little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> when so my all son, he wanted to do was open toys. Yeah, but my son had to watch that, and then when we go to the store, the guy's got. He has his own line of toys. Yep. They live yeah. in Hawaii. I hope their I Baller. hope their house is on fire. What is this kid's name? I hope that Ryan. Ryan yeah, I hope Ryan's yeah. house. Ryan's most, world. Yeah. yeah. I hope Ryan's house is the Dang, most charred I've thing in Hawaii right that now. I've stuff from my girlfriend's god kids before. No more. Yeah. No. No. The kid has a billion dollars because he had one cute video. I don't have a cute hey, video man. online because I care about my child. You see Amanda <laughs> Bynes? That's what happens when you don't care about your child. Yeah. The, the child star phenomena did not change between Hollywood and YouTube. There's Why? tons of families that abuse their children like that. I think we just need to agree... That adults need to play children in movies from now on. Yeah. I like that. Really. It, it really makes me think about, like, all the videos I've seen of, like, you know, like, check out this extraordinary five-year-old drummer, you know, phenomenal, legendary nine-year-old drummer. Why are none of them drumming? <laughs> none of them have joined bands. What happened? To every, they're yeah. all officially adults. Now they have to be. Yeah, I think it's because then they hit 20 and they're just as good as a 20-year-old drummer. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, you're a prodigy, it but then six. but then you can only get so good. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, that's true. You're an adult. Like, I peaked at double blickums. Right, yeah. Blickum, blickum. Like, wow, that was that's amazing. It. Oh, dang, he was so good. <laughs> now, what what did you do after that? Uh, well, I mean, it was really... I did it again? Uh, I, mean, I, I had I, I always have people telling me I got to work more on my video content, you know, and I push more for TikTok to promote the record. But I'm like, you guys don't understand. Really, these days, it's like trying to come up with an idea of videotaping yourself doing something and, and throwing your dart at the board. Like, you know, this kid's rich off of opening presents. I watch what, what the, you know, my girls got kids watch on YouTube. And I'm like, these guys are making so much money just for playing video games. Yep. Yeah. My old boss from Motor City Harley, I wouldn't say my boss, he was a client from when I would DJ at Motor City Harley dealerships. Yeah. I'm I'm not paid by them to say that six. <laughs> you said the whole thing though. <laughs> <laughs> you got it ingrained in you. But I'm I'm strolling TikTok and I'm like, is that Wayne? Is that my South African Motor City Harley friend? There's three times, Wayne. <laughs> yeah. Playing, uh, he's actually in Flint now. Playing, uh, this is not him. And then he talked, and I heard that South African accent. And I was like, no way. His name is like Gray, Gray Ghost, and he's he's like, yeah, I quit. I've been doing it for a year, making so much money. I'm like, I hate you. What does he do? It's fun. He just plays Call of Duty. Just that's it online. That's People it. watch him. He he's got bro. The South African accent is like the sexier version of the Australian accent. So like, it's a little mysterious. They're like, wait, what is that? It's not yeah. quiet. He was generally, Australian. from what I remember, he's a, a hilarious guy. He made me laugh all the time. So if that's any indication, you know what I mean? It's like if you were a gamer or something, you'd be cracking me up all day. Yeah, nobody wants to watch me lose at the new Mario. <laughs> I actually <laughs> no, think we could do, do like a Clueless Gamer segment with with you guys. Yes, that that's, my do, whole, right? that's my whole channel is being bad at video games. So absolutely, that is a thing you can do. I'm terrible. Yes. Are you for real? 
Yes, you know, dude, I love that. I love seriously that. will sit on a plane and I was playing the new Mario and the amount of time it took me to figure out a, a level, I'm like, there's no way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I we will watch that. that. We can make money in our sleep doing that. We got to figure out how to make some money somehow. It's embarrassing, though. <laughs> Be like, like the video game version of bad lip reading. Yeah, all I think about was when I was young and my oh, brother really? just like, this game cheats. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Game Genie. I want Game Genie. Remember that stupid oh, thing you yeah. bought? So the whole, the whole, it's no longer a challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah to put G like that's game journalism. It looked like color codes, like F F F O O O. Yeah, it was like this big like stick thing you bought, and you're like, "Hi, I don't want to try." <laughs> I'm mad at Sonic. Get me right to the end, please. Yeah, it all started when we memorized up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B A select start. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I'm uh, 99 I, lives and we still couldn't beat it. I'll tell you that when I beat Mike Tyson that first time, you did not beat Mike Tyson. I beat Mike Tyson. By your own grit. Out. For my own grit. For real. The sweetest feeling in the wow. world. I beat Punch Out on Nintendo. That was probably the only video game I've ever beaten. The old games are so hard to beat Bro. because they didn't have save states. You don't save, you just play, you sit there and you sit and you play and you mm -hmm. play that level over and over and over. They would, but they'd it. put you two levels back. Yeah. And then three if you failed again. Right. It punished yeah. you for not being good. And your mom's like, dinner time, and you have to set it down and be like, hey, don't walk anywhere close <laughs> to the console. You might make a ripple and it'll freeze. And then your dad and your uncle wanted to play, and you're like, hey, what do you? I thought what you didn't want me to play video games, and then you didn't get to play it all Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> true yeah. they bought me a nintendo and they were like this hockey game's fun and then my brother and i were like there. can we play and they're like you can get out of here <laughs> they're like hey here hold this controller yeah it's 1986 it gets hard for me not to take over on the weekends when my girls got kids are over especially now i got them all hooked on the old guitar hero and like oh, you know, yeah. I, I love music so now that like that's back in the house i'm behind i'm like yeah yeah no boys you keep going Damn it. I, this is my turn <laughs> I come in like South Park with my acoustic, and I'm like, once I roll up of the noise and confusion, <laughs> just beyond the solution. I'll tell you what's a good gift, though. I'm going to tell you this real quick, oh, guys, for tell real. Us. Undertack. Mm -hmm. It's underwear. It's durable. It's ultra light. It's fade resistant and shrink resistant. Here's the best part. They're 25% <laughs> less expensive, and they come with twice the satisfaction guarantee That's of right. the competition. And I'm wearing them right now. Me too. Look. I'll do it again. Show us. I don't even care. Show us. We didn't even know we had to read today. Undertack. Undertack. That is sexy. <laughs> it's soft. It, like you said, it's durable. You give it to, you want you want your package package to look really nice? Undertack, yeah. And it comes oh, in yeah, a nice package. It, like, it and no makes shrinkage. your package look good. Yeah, it, it, you don't have to worry about shrinkage. It stays the perfect room temp. Oh, so yes. when you're ready to display the goods, mm -hmm. it's going to be ready for every occasion. And it's nice and dry because it wicks off those that, that moisture. You don't want swamp ass down there. No, you don't. You don't want that musty stuff. You don't want to pull that out and people be like, what? Is, what, 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 what Put that what? away. No. <laughs> What is that? So what you want to do is get yourself a pair. And remember that if you go to visit, or if you visit, sorry, undertack.com and use promo code NORMAL20, you will get 20% off and you're going to thank me for it. Oh, you will. And a percentage of the, it will go to human trafficking. And again, that is to stopping it. <laughs> so it's, it's not gonna, human trafficking. Yeah, it's not for human trafficking. It will stop human trafficking. Now look at that. Now I don't know what silly Muppet penis that is that you're looking at right there. But a real junk in there yeah. looks... Mine is amazing. It's very detailed. You can see all the edges. Yeah, you can uh, see the That's whole, what you want. They look good is with gray sweats. <laughs> they do. You can look... Yes, you can see the whole helmet uh, oh, yes. as you walk into a, a dinner theater. High fidelity downstairs. <laughs> she walk, under tech. You walk into a strip club that says no sweatpants <laughs> and a bouncer breaks your arm. So anyway, go to... <laughs> uh, undertech.com use code normal 20 they're honestly one of my favorite sponsors they're my favorite sponsors. oh yeah they are. and uh normal 20 yeah. they are seriously exceptional comfort legit so good man i, I seriously they're legit like i threw out all my other underwear replaced them well they're they're honestly the most comfortable underwear i've ever worn yeah like the what is it modal or whatever that that uh yeah Mordor. Material, yeah, Mordor that they <laughs> use. It's freaking. It's legitimately like mind-blowingly soft. It's so good. I still have the pair you sent me, but bikini cuts are the only thing that are comfortable for me these days. Oh, yeah. Really? Mm. But you didn't get the scissors I sent with. 
<laughs> you knew you, you so well. You didn't see where I drew the lines? <laughs> I was like, you will enjoy. I thought that was clever stitching art. No, no. That was a recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> like the back just has a hole. <laughs> like this wasn't a recommendation. Cut here. That's dumpster diving material. <laughs> Grammys. Oh, the Grammys. People still watch that? The Grammys? See, I don't really watch the Grammys. I did like a guy I interviewed once, though. Uh, Jelly Roll seems to be doing pretty well. Dude, he's blowing up. Jelly Roll, it yeah. makes yeah. me emotional, man. Yeah, because he's, uh, he's a 40-year-old man who's getting best new artist. Yeah, which it, is such a that says that a 50-year-old man is next. You're 50? In, in April, yeah. You look good. You look incredible. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate wow. It. Like, a, like a tight 45. <laughs> Appreciate it. I thought you. I honestly thought we were the exact same age. Oh. And I am a rough seventy-one. <laughs> <laughs> what if I was? I'd look great. Oh, you've That'd been be lying great. about it this whole time. I'm not. I'm forty, and I look terrible. Yeah, but yeah I love. And then my favorite part good. is is Especially those undertake is is people fire off on Jelly Roll all the time about his girl, you know, and like uh, like like him, like she's with him because he's rich. That's my favorite part. Is she was she, with him the whole time. She paid for his career. Yep. Really? She paid for the studio time. She paid to print up the albums. She funded his his, his passion. She loves him. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I, we, I hey, why you got to ruin it? <laughs> she said investment <laughs> and that just, oh, my brain just <laughs> went, dang it. Good, good, dang it. She, no prenup because she was there in the start. Damn. No, I know she, how she thinks. Oh man, <laughs> Women. I I interviewed him just before he popped with Ralph Sutton on uh, on sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and he she loves him. Yeah, they had a daughter tell. together. Oh, that's yeah, that's nonsense. The, the it, well, why? Because he's big. Yeah, that's not like that's a chubby not, chaser. Uh, or something? Yeah, but I'm fun. crushing on that guy. He's a sweetheart. Like he, he's so humble. Any speech. So many people in his position. I've already become dickbags. Mm. You know what I mean? And he's crying still every time. You know, like, it's nice to watch. He lost everything. And, ca- well, it came from nothing. Was a, just, I mean, he's still, he's still indulging. But, I mean, he was a mess getting arrested, mm. you know. and th- But the guy sings from his heart. Right. And, I, and he was super nice. And he's still responsive. It's like, it's not, no, I think that's, that's people just want to hate you. Yep. And I, I don't enjoy that. I like to see good people rise. And I like to see people make it when the odds are against them. Yeah. Like Dangerfield, who broke at 50. I like that. I Jelly, like there's see. nothing marketable. If, if a, record exe- a record exec would look at Jelly Roll and not even listen to his song. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, like There's nothing marketable in here. Now he's one of the biggest artists in the world. It gives so much hope. You know, like, and watching Macklemore when he won that Grammy, like, that blew my mind. People still don't realize he didn't have a record deal when he won his Grammy. That yeah, was and all he independent. Was, he was in his mid thirties, right? Yeah. And because of that, that I, they actually tightened all the the sample clearances. The uh, record industry is really, really screwing over independent artists now. I'm feeling it hard. People call me Big Mac Lamore. Big Mac Lamore. Because <laughs> <laughs> I I look like him, but I'm fat. And you have the special sauce. <laughs> it is really great to see that though. Like somebody that didn't give up on their dream, didn't give up on the their creativity, what what they can provide for the world and people picked up on that. Mhm. Like like you're saying like somebody that's you would think, oh, you know, I'm I'm 50, I'm 40. I'm I'm too old to to break into this business like he best new artist. That's like the best. And you're and you're you're past your prime, but you're not. That's like that's so much that's so helpful to people that that uh have that kind of drive yeah it felt like they they went and did a, a job that they hated for 20 years and it wasn't the thing that they really loved and that they're thinking oh, what if i did that thing you could still do that thing mm-hmm. you could still go out there and give it a shot because look at all these other examples it's, it's i like crazy. to make it and then throw it away well that's and then a make thing. it again <laughs> you did yeah. i know it's and i'm on <laughs> i'm on my third chance <laughs> third time's the charm yeah let's hope so <laughs> Oh, oh boy. <laughs> we'll see. If not, I bought a gun. Oh. That's honestly <laughs> why why I started rapping again. It's just for me. Yeah. <sighs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> when you hey, snap, you don't uh, know. Dave, I love you. Huh? I'd like to give you uh, gifts. Yeah? 
So I'm the good one. <laughs> you ain't never give me nothing. Okay. Except them crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dirty Wipe. I forgot I was going <laughs> to did something throw you? <laughs> it was it was something again about about the the age thing. Oh, uh, the 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 and I say this all the time. There's like the one thing I'm a freaky conspiracy theorist about is the record industry and the way Prince died and the way mm. Michael Jackson died. Like how are they dying right after they get the rights to their music. I understand there's lots of other controversies around them, but come on, man. Like Prince's people even said that he was talking and saying goodbye to people. Like, well, I own the rights to my music, so I don't think I'm going to be around very long. Yeah. I feel like Prince was uh, a genius and smart enough to check a bag for fentanyl. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm being serious. Michael Jackson's yeah. doctor is in prison for murder. Yeah. He literally finally, he finally admitted that he switched the pills on purpose. He's in prison for murder, and he's not saying who paid for it. Which doesn't make any sense. Sony. And, <clears throat> uh, and I met one. Allegedly. I've, I met one of Allegedly. Prince's... Sorry, I forgot where I'm yeah. At. In She's, Minecraft. Yeah, wait, what happened? Nothing. Talk to me. Move on. We can talk about it. I want to know. No, I was just saying uh, Sony did it. <coughs> oh, yeah. I don't Allegedly. Think... No. Oh, oh, I see it. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's like when Eminem was like, Diddy put out the hit that got pot killed and said, I'm just playing Diddy. No, you weren't. Right. No, you weren't. Come no, on. No, you weren't. Stop it. And you why? made people think, and now Diddy's in trouble. But why wouldn't you think that uh, there'd be vengeance? Huh. True. Time to get paid. Right? Blow up like the world trade. That's right. Ornson, the opposite of, of a winner. winner. Remember when he used to eat sardines for dinner? Which I don't know if he... He had a lot of sardines. It's really salty. You know, a lot of sodium. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> keep loading. Money green leather sofa. Got two rods a limousine with a sofa. I just did that <laughs> song at... Uh, I did that song at Arts, Beats, and Eats. And about the, a week before I went on, I was like, oh, man. I'm doing this big tribute to hip-hop. They're all going to say the N-word on Juicy. If you don't know, now you know. So before I even started, I was like, I just want to throw this out there, man. I'm trying to get all peace and love today. So white people, it's not okay for everybody to say this word. <laughs> so at the end of the verse, I'm switching it. Follow me. And I change it. I go, if you don't know, don't say it, yo. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to be the one that starts the fight at our Yeah, team. you don't well, want to. I, don't I feel eat. like now's not the time. I'm no. a free speech absolutist, but you know, you're not alone in your car. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, you know, I even uh, I don't know. I just that's uh, just, eh. just I used to smart uh, about it. You know? I used to throw the crossfader over when I'd be DJing and I'd play it in the club and everybody was like, feeling brave. <laughs> I'd kill it to silence right on that word. Oh man, oh, faster! You hear the word fall off a cliff. It was like, no, no. And just the, see like the one guy like. And believe it or not, and, and I don't know if it was the time or just because I was always lighthearted with it, every single black person in the room would just laugh. Nobody got yeah. mad. They just, no. the focus was on that I punked them all out. You know what I mean? Well, remember when we used to uh, laugh and respect each other's art? Yeah. Yeah, those were good days. A long time ago. And we stopped. So the Grammys. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. No, no, I, I'm, yeah. that's why you're here. I mean, we're here because we're friends and you're very talented musician but i figured we'd talk about a little bit of music yeah, yeah same. so it's like 50 years of hip-hop is what they had there and and it was <sighs> filmed in Ing in inglewood at the uh, the youtube theater I, <laughs> wow did I, I always name the youtube theater <laughs> yeah i guess it's been the youtube theater for some <laughs> some time decades for like 80 years yeah. it used to be a, years, they used to be a sausage theater. company <laughs> and uh back in uh <laughs> do it yourself yeah sausage <laughs> <Casey Avengers>. <laughs> Wow, well, <laughs> I thought that wasn't even accurate, so I didn't read it right. So at Inglewood's YouTube Theater. <laughs> Nothing says Inglewood like YouTube Theater. Like YouTube Theater. Yeah. theater. I wonder what it was before. Yeah. Yo, Cube, I, we I, going down to the YouTube <laughs> Theater. <laughs> <laughs> Inglewood up to no dope. good. Except in the YouTube boy. Theater, we're very well behaved. <laughs> I heard them busters are at the YouTube Theater watching Julio Iglesias. <laughs> Christmas <laughs> classics. <laughs> We'll catch him coming out. Ricky! No! No! He was the first one that was going to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> so it aired on BET. Okay. Uh, uh, which is, um, it's it's uh, the black entertainment television. I don't yes. know if you knew that. Um, the, the YouTube. BET has been around a while. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube. It's been around longer than YouTube. <laughs> Really? I looked into it. Oh. And uh, rappers and DJs came together to celebrate uh, what started in the Bronx in the 1970s, charting its impact through a strong lineup of rappers, beatboxers, dancers, DJs, and presenters. 
some artists on uh, on hand were Queen Latifah, Common, Public Enemy, Rakim, Dougie Fresh. I'm so pissed Dang, I didn't watch so this. <laughs> MC, like, Holy crap. Rakim. Ross, Yo-Yo, Jermaine Dupri, <laughs> Too Short, E-40, De La Soul. Uh, this is insane. This is yeah. a crazy JJ lineup. Fad. Dude, Nelly. all three. Chan- Chance the Rapper, and we have a clip of Will well, Smith. So, well, yeah, well see, that's the thing, is that the only clip that they've posted on the internet is like Will Smith's set. Will Smith? Well, and there's a like reason. It was a big though. deal behind the Will Smith thing, though. Will Smith won the first rap Grammy, and back then they weren't oh. respecting rap yet, so he couldn't even thank anybody. He They gave it to him backstage. He wasn't even... They didn't wow. announce it. They didn't put it in the credits. There was no recognition. It was like during the commercial break or something? Yeah, and in the following year, rap blew up so big that Will Smith won the first rap Grammy the next year, and they had uh, to bring him on and let him perform. Did he slap Chris Rock in that? No. 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 This was before after his ass was getting murdered. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, the coolest thing was they wore the same fit. Those are the same outfits, same well, necklace. that's cool. Oh, is this one? I like that. Yeah, and uh, they even use, they're introduced as DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Hell yeah. Really? Dude, well, I kind of want to come yep. back and watch it's this. It's going out here. We have it. We have I want, well, stuff. real quick, though, I do <laughs> want to ask I'm you. Gonna, I'm not going to lie. I just love rap so much, and it's come so far. I, I cried like a baby watching them get up there and that's do it awesome. the way they did it. Yeah. With the special. RZA, he, was, he would watch people DJ in the park uh, in the Bronx. Who was that? Because was, um, was it Quincy Jones? Was it... Um, yeah, a lot of people. I can't. I know they used DJ to do it. Even Blondie. And, yeah, she so loved cool. watching DJs. Yeah, and I, I'm trying to think though who the DJs oh, were. Cool. Though. It was Cool Herc was the first DJ. That's who it was. Thanks. The first. I DJ. appreciate. It. All right, let's. And I love DJ Jazzy Jeff. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, and of course, I, regardless of jokes we've made as of late, uh, Will Smith fan of. Well. Yeah, fan of Will Smith. Um. Real quick, I uh, I don't, I don't think I ever got to tell you this, but when I went to New York with Hush, we actually ended up talking to Grandmaster Kaz and he brought us to the, uh, I can't remember the name of the projects right now, but it was one of the four boroughs. The four boroughs were where Cool Herc was here, Grandmaster Flash was here, you know, and, and they all had their different little crews. So he's standing there talking to us. He goes, yo, just check this out real quick. And he points over these projects. He goes, that was Flash. That was Herc. This was me. And this was, and as he yeah. pointed, I'm like, we're right in the middle of the birth of hip-hop about to get fucking murdered because at that That's point he's like it's getting dark y'all are white get in an uber and go home <laughs> we were no still way. in the projects at the end of the day he still lives in the projects grandmaster kaz he won't leave really wow. still lives in the same project house came out with his gold chain i'm like you're the one getting trouble over here it ain't me it's amazing that hush who has a show where he rescues pit bulls in detroit is like we need to get out of here right now he wasn't what scared us was grandmaster kaz <laughs> He has this friend named Rico, a scary, scary Puerto Rican gangster okay. type. And uh, he literally looks at me and goes, he goes, I ain't trying to cut this short. We can hang another time, but y'all don't want to be out here after dark. And he goes, hey, Rico, make sure they get to their Uber okay. And that's when I was like, what? <laughs> we might not make it up the sidewalk and then as soon as he went in there was like literally heard the basketball stop dribbling and then everybody walked over to the sidewalk it was like uh uh the movie with house of pain in it and um dennis leary uh judgment night judgment night it felt like judgment night i'm like we're getting stomped bro I, dude i'm not going home with luggage one of the greatest soundtracks ever <clears throat> it was time. it really was the, so let's play this. I wanna, yeah, let's check I it out. I hear a little bit of this. Sorry. We we'll need to talk a little. Oh, get yeah, we'll get hit. Just so you know, that way we don't get pulled, so don't be... Oh, wow, look at this. This is how oh, we opened cool. up all his shows in the 80s, too. I hope I'm not disturbing you. But if I am, so what? Stop it. Because me and Jeff <laughs> are about to co-rock this. We're musical, magical, That's radical. really cool, man. No small letters in our names, only capitals. It's unbelievable, inconceivable that we He really is amazing. Yeah, he's killing it. Yeah. Impossible. We ain't no brand new group, but so what, man? My favorite is watch his kids. Say what you will about the Smith family. Nobody supports unabashedly their family like those kids. Oh, yeah. They're not sitting down, oh, no. applauding. They're up and rapping with them. I don't think anybody thinks his kids are the problem. No. <laughs> it really sucks. He doesn't deserve what he's doing. Dana got like no airtime. She has so good. Yes, I didn't think she was there, and then her head popped up in a photo today. Yeah, no, he's doing a good job. I don't think she's there either. <laughs> So it sucks. He deserves way better they, than that, man. Dude, D, Jazzy Jeff is amazing. They don't He's look great like they've too. aged much either. No. It's like... There's Queen. I miss James Avery throwing him out. Oscars, Oscars are like... Ah! 
uh, Oscars are like, you're banned, you're gonna be canceled, your career's getting tanked. Yeah. The internet was like, Will Smith's career is over. The Grammy said, like, let's nope. just show everyone how fucking legendary you really are. Which he is. He deserves that. I mean, he was, what, 17 when he got that Grammy? Yeah, he wrote a song called The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and turned it to one of the most successful sitcoms of all time. Yeah, because Quincy Jones was the one who saw it, picked mm-hmm. it up based on... That's incredible. And that turned him into an A-list actor. Yep. So crazy. Mm-hmm. They do like the first. That was like three, four years into the show. Yeah, rap did that. That's nuts. Here comes my shit. <laughs> he should do tours again. Is he is he touring ever? Like he just I don't think he will. DJ Jazzy like, Jeff. Jeff. He don't need that loop. DJ Jazzy Jeff is touring with Paul Abdul and I think new Paul is still good. People, I I doubt. I, I, I watched her Paula interview and she still seems like she's like really. Pilled out? No, no, yeah. the opposite. I, I okay. feel like she was really cognizant of like everything was going on, and she was going into her past and talking about like how she came up and all that stuff. So yeah, I bet that's a great show. I mean, it could be like Ozzy Osbourne, where for a long time he seemed out of his mind, yeah. but then you handed him a mic and you were like, oh wow, he's fine. Yeah. When I met Ozzy when I worked at the radio station, he shook my hand to say hi, and I waited for that. He shook my hand, he gripped it, he looked me in the face, he said, it's a pleasure to meet you, thank you so much for supporting me all of these years. Me and my family greatly appreciate it. I'm like, you are none of that. Just like I told you about with the vanilla ice thing. I don't know, we were talking about it out in the hallway. Like, it's crazy these reality shows, how they they fake being stupid or being an asshole. The only thing I disagreed with with this performance is after that he ended up doing Miami and getting jiggy with it. And I know those are big songs, but they, this was the hip hop. Yeah. 50th and then he ended up doing the Fresh Prince uh, thing mm-hmm. like as a mashup that was really cool but yeah, like, I don't care for the other he even got bored oh, during Miami I love those songs too you could see you him young, getting bored during was my, I was like six I was in high school so I was like yeah <laughs> get jiggy with it how old are you right nah, nah. now I'm uh, 31. 31. Oh, yeah. I was in high school and he was on Nickelodeon going, like, I don't swear in my albums. Like, yeah, but you do in your movies. Shut up. <laughs> like, what's yeah, bitch, bitch, right? What? Yeah, you're Mike Lowry. I was never, I'll be honest. I, I get why you like it. I mean, I'm not saying, oh, no, dude. I'm not knocking you for that. And he had good stuff from that era. That album had just the two of us, the song he did for his kids, uh, for Jaden. That song was amazing. And the song, oh, actually, that he did that for was- Jeff, Friends. Yes. That song. That song always, always, every time I hear it to this day, rips a heart out of my chest. Just the two of us is a, is a great song too. Yeah. Like the the meaning behind it. And that was just for that was for his oldest son, the son he had with. Uh, was it's not Jada? It was for Jaden. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is yeah, his, a great song. which is his second oldest. Oh, okay. Um, okay. He has the one older kid that's always around the song that nobody was for his ever oldest, talks about. His yeah. No, uh, Jaden. It was for Jaden. Okay. Oh, it was for Jaden. Just like there's the one Michael Jackson kid that successfully stays out of every yeah. headline. There's yeah. the one, and he's always sitting opposite side of all the other kids. Like, like no. I'm just trying to be cool here. Uh, you well, know how you be cool? Uh, well, I don't drink <laughs> well, you're myself. In a r- you're in a room full of... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> People peer that don't pressure. Drink. <laughs> drink some Fox and Odin bourbon. Uh, it's brewed in Ohio, so if you're Ohio native, that's your kind of stuff. Uh, it's it's uh, smooth. It's a smooth bourbon you can have just sipping. Uh, uh, not, none of these people in this room, though. Because but I would happily coming. serve it to anybody who came to my house. Actually, I can tell you that my husband, I let my husband have oh, yeah? someone who took a bottle. What do you think? He loved it. And he's yeah. a, a whiskey bourbon guy. Same. Um, he had the double barrel. Uh, a little spicier. It is spicier. And he actually had to cut it with some water because he was like, it is really it's strong. Spicy. And it's, yeah. So, so visit foxandodin.com. <laughs> yes. Don't look over here. <laughs> I'm like, dirty white. Don't look it looks at nice. it. That's fox <laughs> and O D E N dot com. You get 30% off. Use code normal at checkout. Check it out. Look at Plus that. Plus free shipping on Plus all orders. Oh. And it's from Ohio. Being from Michigan, me and Dave, we love Ohio. Yeah, oh, you don't, don't have any kind of beef at all. Best state. <laughs> drink responsibly, please. Or don't drink at all if you're you like the Midwest. Covering. though. Ohio is for lovers. Do like the Midwest. That's what the bumper sticker said. Oh. We but the to- the rest of that, uh, I I don't know. I don't know if we were wrapped with the with the fiftieth thing, but um, oh, go ahead. If you haven't seen it, you got to see the rest of it. The best was they opened up with the ladies of hip hop, and you would really appreciate this. I didn't see Salt and Pepper there. 
This is my own thought. LL Cool J made a comment about how Salt and Peppa, uh, they do not include Spinderella in anything. They've written out their DJ completely. She came to the Hollywood Walk of Fame because they didn't have any say so in that. But the Grammy thing, they didn't let her come. Mm. They don't let her come to end it. She don't tour them anymore. So I'm thinking that LL Cool J was like, well, then y'all bitches ain't coming. Wow. So Spinderella was the DJ for the ladies segment. Really? Yeah. It was, dude. It w And they didn't go after like corny, you know, like it was Lat like Lat Latifah that. rapped like three songs during that show, man. You need, this is the craziest thing ever. Arrested Development all got back together. Really? Diggable wow. Planets. That's incredible. The only thing I didn't like is that fucking Machine Gun Kelly was there. Desi. Why was he there? Wait, did he do, did he perform? No, so he he, he was hanging out just, with. I don't even want you in the crowd. They did a. I didn't want him showing up on camera at all. He's <laughs> not. He quit. He quit rap music. He's not. Wait, even, who was it that that rapped him out of out of the game? Because Flood told me about this. Eminem. Yeah, Eminem. That was, was Marshall. Yeah, that was okay, Marshall. Because well, he decided that he would go up against Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. In in the worst personal way <laughs> possible. He also goes by Regis and Kelly now. <laughs> <laughs> he uh. <laughs> and uh I, I rapper now dave uh i don't know if dave was on the same show or not or knows i think he knows the the story of how that beef really happened there's so many speculations in the world but i heard it from one of the goats mouths and it started off pure disrespect from mgk eminem never wanted to do anything to that guy he went to he played saint andrews hall and then he went across the street where our friend dj godfather was playing very great uh worldwide known dj and uh his Machine Gun Kelly's manager told Godfather, he said he don't want to rap at the after party. He's not going to rap at all. So out of nowhere, MGK comes up and he goes, I want to rap. And this is when he was still promoting Wild Boys. Mm -hmm. And he's like, all right, well, I only have the DJ version. So you got to remember there's four extra measures in the beginning. There's an intro. So he fucked up his own song. He came in too early. <clears throat> and he was yelling in the club. It was blue yelling in the club you ain't shit you're the wackest dj ever he hits the top 100 worldwide djs every year the top 20 every year so he talks all this shit to him and because he was angry because he almost got his ass kicked and he got chased out of detroit he got on twitter and said i wish i would have hit Haley mathers while i was in town what oh that's smart she was underage or no, hollered at. Wish I would have hollered at Haley while I was in town. Either place. way. So he waited till he got out of town, and then he got, I think he was on the, the no-fly list for a little while. I think he couldn't. I think Trick was like, don't come here. Which makes sense. And then Trick got super successful one day, and I don't know if we have a no-fly list anymore. Right. And then he went after Eminem, and then Eminem just buried him. Yeah, he destroyed his own career by trying to talk about Eminem. All because... Yeah. The thing with DJ Godfather. And because er, he messed er, up and was embarrassed about it. <laughs> earlier that night, he was on the steps of St. Andrew's Hall doing a, a TikTok thing or something live, and he was doing an acoustic cover of the freestyle from 8 Mile. That's how much he was sucking them's dick. Hmm. He was like, he memorized his freestyle from 8 Mile and was doing an acoustic singy version of it. You know what's better than an acoustic cover of that? Uh, the original. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Who's ever watched that and said, you know what, you know what I'd like to hear? An acoustic cover yes. of this. Unplugged. Yes. It's your moment. You own it. <laughs> <laughs> it's acapella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he, he, he was there bum, with, bum, with bum, all the mumble rappers. Bum, and, bum, 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 <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like tapping bum, the guitar? That's good. <laughs> There's vomit on his sweater already. <laughs> Mom spaghetti. Mom spaghetti. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> Speaking of, I still want to try that spaghetti. Oh, from the from the to go box. Hey, I love it. You gotta want to trash. His, his it was like, I'm just gonna put a window on the side of this building and pedal spaghetti out of it. And why not? <laughs> yeah, I feel like you can't even drive up to it. You just gotta walk <laughs> through an alley. To get it. That's the part that's funny. It's like it's like I want the experience. You can know? I eat the messiest food inside? No. No. You have right. to eat it in your hand. <laughs> this. They give it to you in a sandwich or in like an Asian to go it's container. A go container. Yeah. Yeah. With with the bottoms all folded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can oh, it's all like it. <laughs> and I don't no, know why. I think it's just the height, but I'm like, I do want to try that sketty sandwich, man. Try that yeah. Sketty. I mean, yeah, it's sketty. <laughs> well, we do have to get out of here, man. I want to thank you very much for coming. I wanna uh go ahead and, and though before we get into the end of the world here, yeah. you have some albums out. Let me uh yeah, we've had, my a, shoulder we've had a busy year for once. You have. Let's start right now. You can get Dirty White. Rebuild. Oh, look the at rebuilding that. of a broken soul. That's right. On where record. can we get this at? 
Uh, that record, unfortunately, is flagged for the most uh, unrecognizable song sample on there. So that one you can only get through my band camp, which I don't know the actual band camp info, but it's Dirty White in the High Life Social Club. Also, we just launched an official website, and you can get it from there, which is dirtywhitehlsc.com. Um, all the rest of our music you can stream everywhere. So, But The Rebuilding of a Broken Soul, uh, that's my jam. That's the album I wrote about losing my sister to alcoholism and, and coming back from it all. Authenticated is the album that Dave is on because I remember I hit up Dave and I was like, man, remember when rap albums had comedy skits? And, uh, yes. and we brought that back. And, and, yes, I, and somehow, somehow, man, you've blown up so much. That's the most popular track in my entire <laughs> library. <laughs> so good. Uh, and then also Dirty White is the name, the EP, uh, which is a lot of more like lyrical flexing, not, not super emotional. And uh, we just dropped two singles in the past two weeks. Um, one of them is called Christmas with My Sister. Uh, it's a song about how much my sister loved Christmas, but it's about grief around Christmas. And I really wanted to make it for people that are hurting from losing somebody around the holidays. And then uh, the one that, uh, that, that, uh, that I might rock tonight, if you let me, this track called Hey Yo. Oh, yeah. Which is, mm -hmm. is probably the best song I've ever made. Oh. Can't wait. Just, you know, we have several just, videos. The just YouTube go to channel it. is hot. Yeah. Yo, you want to you want to just hit it? Yeah, why don't we just go to it? Actually, can you oh, want to yeah. give a couple of shout-outs before you do this? Yeah, if I before yeah, I get out of here, of if I get some shouts, I'd really appreciate it. Uh obviously my family, my mom, and my dad. This is just a very cool moment for me. Um my brother, my sister up in heaven. And now the rest of this is is business. Everybody that's helped me lately so much through music. Uh Jamie Brady, my drummer and best friend, my manager Shank, my other best friend Mike Sal, DJ's Nano and DJ Bet from uh Scratchers Crew in Detroit. DK Con, Scratchers Crew in Detroit, Gordy O'Shea, my guitar player, Steve Cat, my engineer, 54 Sound, where they did all the M stuff, where we recorded the album, my producers, Stir Crazy and Native Keys, Cancer, The God is the dude that does most of my artwork, and uh, of course, Daryl McDaniels. I, I can't not thank him because he's the only reason I'm rapping again. He told me you're never too old. And uh, and you guys, of course, oh, most thanks, importantly, man. you guys, uh, you especially, Dave, when I was I was putting Dave in front of like, it was like we were worldwide and I bragged on it all the time, but it was like two people in every country. But Dave came on my show a bunch of times and we had a lot of fun and he started selling out Mark Ridley's and stuff. And I was oh, yeah. like, I was like, man, you're going to blow up and forget about me one day. And he said, no, nah, man, no. Nah. And uh, he didn't lie. I appreciate you, brother. Well, I appreciate you, my friend. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, uh, without further ado, Dirty White. Avoiding the noise, I know they're trolling me. Yeah. I'm always growing, ain't nobody in control of me. No. I got the flow in me, yo, this shit is poetry. And one day, hopefully, you'll maybe be as dope as me. Socially, though, I'm an emotional mess. I spend way too much of my time worried and stressed. But I gotta keep my head up, cause I know that there's a better day. I know they're looking down on me, and I gotta find a better way. And so I do, and I'm doing it for you. Everybody that I love, my family and my crew. Hey, yo, and I don't need shots to have a good time. All I need is good people and some good wine, yo. Believe in the vibes, all positive. Bobby Brown, y'all, this is my prerogative. We rocking it from sun up to sundown. The music keeps me high and I don't ever want to come down. Shout out to my people that ain't giving up. And every single one of y'all that actually give up. Yeah, peace to my people, the evil you with me lurking, man. But I'm going to keep on smirking while these jerks are catching hurt. Yeah, and I won't ever close the curtain. What a future so uncertain. I'm only human, so a lot of times I'm still learning. Still hurtling and following dreams. And I'm so proud of all six of my streams. <laughs> but on the real, I want to thank you all for the support. You're fucking awesome, man. You make a brother feel adored. And on my own accord, I'm here to talk to you. Give you some music for whatever y'all are going through. And if I could just make another person's day better, that's all I need to keep it tougher than leather. If we keep coming together, there ain't a wall that we can't climb. 
It's all love, come along for the ride. Don't keep your feelings inside. Around here, we express them. Let's have a session, no stress, no question. Stay young, and I don't need shots to have a good time. All I need is good people and some good rhymes. Yeah. We keeping the vibes all positive. Bobby Brown, y'all, this is my prerogative. Yeah. We rocking it from sun up to sundown. The music keeps me high, and I don't ever want to come down. Yeah. Shout out to the people that ain't giving up, and every single one of y'all that actually gives up. So come and rock with me, like it's your last day living. What makes you happy, don't ask for permission yeah. Just sit back and listen Vibe with the highlight And get your mind right We're feeling alive tonight I got my rhymes right I got the boots ready Crazy on the beat And I'm about to hit the booth heavy So keep it move friendly Or keep it moving All I choose to keep improving All my music is seducing you Shout out to the producers For keeping us laced up We're doing alright But y'all don't need to see our pace up it ain't about the cheddar, throw it in the shredder Man, we do this thing here just, just to try to make life better Because these times are tough, and it's hard to smile you Just know that your whole life is worthwhile Just know that all of us sincerely want you here And I really hope I made myself loud and clear And I don't need shots to have a good time All I need is good people and some good rhyme We keeping the vibes all positive Bobby Brown, y'all, this is my rhyme And every single one of y'all that actually give a fuck. And a huge shout out to my man Dave Landau in Normal hey, World. Yo. Love you. Hey, yo.